Hello and welcome everyone to Dine with the Divine. I'm Ashley, your host, and as usual, today we'll be going into the world of the magical, the mystical, and everything in between. So on today's episode, we'll talk a little bit about cleansing your space, and we will also be telling one of everyone's favorite fairy tales. Anyway, so today we have a fantastic guest. We have Amy Blackthorne with us. Amy Blackthorne is an award-winning author of the bestsellers Blackthorne's Botanical Magic, Sacred Smoke, Blackthorne's Botanical Brews, Blackthorne's Protective Magic, and Blackthorne's Botanical Wellness. She has been described as an arcane horticulturist, horticulturist, I'm sorry. That's okay. For her, <laughs> for her lifelong work with the magical plants and with magical plants and teaching. She incorporates her experiences in British traditional witchcraft with her horticulture studies. She has a certification in aromatherapy and is ordained through the Order of the Golden Griffin. Amy's company, Blackthorn's Botanicals, creates tea based on magical association. She has appeared on Huffington Post Live, Netflix Top 10 Secrets and Mysteries in an episode about supernatural abilities and the AP Newswire. She lives in Delaware, and you can find any of her teas at her tea shop at blackthornsbotanicals.com. Amy, how are you? I'm amazing. Thank you so much for having me today. No problem. I'm so happy to talk to you. How I always ask everybody how they got into this in the first place. So I, it's a little it's a little twofold. I started with plants, and then I worked into magic instead of magic and then plants. So when I was about goodness 11 years old Mm -hmm. I my older sister who I shared a bedroom with came home with her best friend and they're sneaking and giggles and uh, having a great time with their whatever secret project they were engaged in very (laughs) guarding very carefully their book bags and scurrying up the stairs and the easiest and the quickest way to get a, a younger sibling involved in your business is to tell them they're not invited Absolutely. So I yeah. was just out of my own room. I'm like, okay, you got something good in there. I figured it was some righteous candy or something they didn't want to share. Yeah. So I waited until after bed. Probably falls asleep. Everybody's, the whole house is quiet. There's a hush. And Ooh. I sneak, Pink Panther style, out of my bed, doop, across the bedroom, into her side of the room, mm. where her book bag is waiting. Ooh. Mysteries. And yes. so I opened that thing one tooth of a zipper at a time until I opened the bag and I grabbed the, the, whatever it is in there and I sneak back to my bed and I scurry under the covers and I look by the light of the gas station down the end of the block. Not We can't risk a flashlight, no. And I Absolutely look, not. <laughs> and it's Wicca Guide for Solitaire Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. Mm. So I read it cover to cover in an hour or something ridiculous. And I was hooked. I had to go into the library. Uh, you know, I was going to the, to the library after school every day and wandering around the nonfiction section in the 133s going, give me everything I can find on magic. Mm-hmm. I was hooked. Interesting. What, what about it was like the first, what was one of the things, you can tell me any of the things that you were reading about or that you related to that really drew you in? It wasn't just the sense of agency, although that was a big part of it. It was the idea that the natural forces that I had worked with every day out under the sunshine, trying to grow my plants and and really develop my little friends. I was cross-pollinating petunias, trying to make new hybrid strains of petunias. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. And so the sun that grew, that gave its light to my plants and the earth that nurtured them and every bit of those pieces came together in something that really reflected the way that I felt in my heart. Mm. And even as a small 11 years old, it's not, that's you're very, you're not even a baby yet. You're just a tiny little person. (laughs) Um, It was really important that I felt like somebody would listen to me. Mm. I was a middle child of five girls (laughs) <laughs> so wow. I okay. had middle child syndrome big. Like I, I would just felt like I disappeared mm. every day in the, in the shuffle of everything. So it felt like the fact that somebody would listen to me, that, that somebody was caring about who I was at that point. My, our parents 
It wasn't that we they wanted a strong religious upbringing for us. They just sent us yeah. to whoever, whatever church was close by because it was free babysitting. Yeah, yeah. So they didn't care about denominations. They just cared that we weren't underfoot. Like, give me some place to sleep off my hangover and, and just don't yeah. bother me. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went to church, but it was more like something to do to get out of the house, not actually a, a place to belong. Yeah. Cunningham's words gave me a place to belong. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. I, Scott Cunningham, his book of like magical herbs, I've, mm -hmm. uh, I made the mistake one time of giving it to somebody and I never gave it God back, but I obviously just bought another one. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not getting this book back. It's fine, but it's so useful. And then he has the, the other book that I have is of the incense, the Brews and the book I'm talking about. Incense oils and brews. Uh -huh. Yes, that one. So I'm not a Wiccan, but um, I've used those books and his like formulas quite mm -hmm. a bit. Um, and the way he breaks everything down is so easy. And like he gives you all the substitutes. And like we were all better for having Scott Cunningham in the world. Thank you, yes. Rest in Power, because he, everything is so put in the book. And I just, it's such a resource for anybody, even if obviously you're super advanced when it comes to a uh, horticulture and all. I'm not. I love herbs and all that kind of stuff, but I just use them basically. But it, it breaks everything down. So if anybody is in other, obviously, other than Amy's books, if anybody's <laughs> interested in learning, working with herbs and stuff, he's also another resource that's absolutely fantastic is Scott Cunningham's books are really good. Yeah, I think... I love how you said that it gave you a place to belong, like reading all through it. I feel that a lot of, and I know that, I don't think we say it anymore, but back in the day, I've mentioned this a few times on this podcast. I talked about like this was website belief net, which I think I just mm -hmm. looked up the other day. That's still up. Hey, it's uh, not Patreon. It's Patheos now. Okay. Yeah. So I used to go on, when I used to go on it, it was belief net. Now it's Patheos. Okay. They always like had the, like, what religion should you be or whatever. Oh, I remember that like, test. Yes, I used to take it constantly. <laughs> and I used to change my answers a little bit because I wanted to see what came up. I'm like, okay, what's it going to be now? But I used to always love how they'd be like earth-based religions. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, most religions are earth-based because we're on the earth. We're on earth. <laughs> we literally all live here. Like, we have no choice. Like, like, <laughs> it has to be earth-based. Like, I love it. I know, but it's like, so like every pagan path was like earth based, but I used to like it because like when you really think about it, it's when you said it gives you a place to belong. I thought of that to myself, like a lot of these different spiritual paths, it's because you are able to, like you said first, you said it's not just a sense of agency, but that's such a big part of it too. Mm -hmm. It gives you like, oh, I can do something about my life. Like it's not just some big person in the sky who's controlling everything or has half control i don't know but like, and obviously people have different approaches to mainstream religion that are similar to being very in touch with their creator i'm not saying everyone's like that but the majority that you see or the churches that you go to it's all just don't fuck up because sky daddy is going to be pissed it's like okay but what can i do to be better than just don't fuck up and here are a couple of things that you shouldn't fuck up and you're like just this? Okay. You're like, <laughs> you're like, oh, just these things? And every religion has different things. And you're like, but like, shouldn't I just decide for myself and like, be a decent person? They're like, mm -mm. these things are the important ones. And everything <laughs> yeah. else. You're like, don't, don't be a dick. That doesn't sound hard. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But when you like have this sense of, oh, like I'm in this difficult situation and spiritually I can connect and talk to sky daddy earth mama whomever all of them none of them whoever you believe in and i can maybe use things on the earth things around me to help me change and maybe influence my situation it's like, wow i can really i have more control in a little bit over my own destiny and like, that's cool and when you i feel like the secret is the secret everybody listen up the secret that these big Time religions know and how Karl Marx was like, oh, religion's just trying to control everybody. I get that. Facts. But also the secret is when you have more agency, the more you believe. Yeah. Like the more, the more 
you're like, actually, this shit is probably true because I'm actually handling this shit pretty well for myself. And I got a little help from whoever or whatever. But this is definitely true because I am working on it myself. So it's like if everybody just had a little bit more of that freedom Mm -hmm. in these places, more people would be like, actually, this is probably this is good for me. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the other secret is they don't want you to believe. They want you to adhere. They want you to listen and obey. Mm-hmm. because that yeah. that gives them more control over your life it gives you yeah. means you give them more money more status more appropriate controls that they feel that they desire like it's not about nurturing your belief when people talk about oh it's my job to witness to other people witnessing is not a job of conversion it's not its yeah. goal the goal of witnessing is to Send those people out into the world and have them be rejected. Mm -hmm. So they come back to the church and say, you guys were right. Nobody else understands me but you. Mm -hmm. That's the point of witnessing. It has nothing to do with conversion. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And it's, it's so sad because it robs people of like true, real experiences that they could have. Because instead joy. of being, yeah, yeah, joy, that's also a big one. Like, <laughs> instead of going out and having these spiritual experiences and being able to be like, wow, I, this thing happened to me and it's so cool. And, and people being like, okay, that's cool. It didn't happen for me like that. Or like, that's your experience and that's cool. Just telling people like, no, that's wrong. Like, no, you shouldn't have done that. It's, it sucks. <laughs> like, to have that. It's, a, it's the same feeling that we get when we say, hey, I'm really feeling myself today. How mm-hmm. about this picture? I look great. And someone goes, that shirt not working for you. And you just feel crushed. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And it's sad. This is, I hope I'm, I hope I'm going to be able to get back to this point. So we'll try. Um, <laughs> I feel like when I was a kid, so as a lot of us people who end up on this spiritual aka hope that's not offensive to anybody path i feel that a lot of us had big imaginations when we were young Mm -hmm. or we saw things and we were like this could be true me i believed in mermaids i still do i loved a mermaid i loved a genie i loved all that stuff so i used to feel and this is a weird thought but i used to think like when you get older, you're just not allowed to believe in any of that anymore and it used to make me super sad i used to be like I don't want to grow up for the pure fact that when I grow up, you can't believe in these things. You can't enjoy yourself like this anymore. And it's not even just like religion that robs you. It's like society. I feel like sometimes robs you of that. It's like you get older and you want to just, you see magic in life and it could be in a million different ways. It doesn't necessarily just have to be one way. But people always want you to be like, no, but you have to do X, Y, and Z and do this. And now you're an adult and you have to be like this. And the thing is, yeah, I'm an adult and I pay bills and that's fine. Yeah, I still believe in mermaids and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing any of that. You still believe in magic. That's fine. Obviously, I do. So a lot of people do. And it's great. If it makes you happy, then do it. That's what you should do. If My rule of life. Again, I will somehow get back to our point. Don't worry. My rule of life is if everybody's consenting and you're happy, then what's the problem? Let's just do it. Who cares? Everyone's cool with it. You're cool with it. Do it. Believe in it. If it makes you feel good. I'll get tell you what. Back. Go ahead. There is on Instagram, on TikTok, and a couple different places. There's a black family that I met at FairyCon who are mermaids. Oh. They have the husband and wife have their own tales, go out, do events, Mm -hmm. poolside, they can do events, but they do videos out in the ocean with their tiny little babies. And now they're learning to swim just like most kids learn to walk. And it's the most beautiful thing ever in in the history of ever. Like let people like things. Let people like things. That's honestly, just do it. Do the thing that you love. I'm slightly obsessed with mermaids on Instagram. All of them. Everybody, if you are a mermaid and want me to follow you, just that's fine. (laughs) Follow me. I'll follow you because I I won't follow you. Not not that anybody's in particular. I want that girl to follow me. But if you do, I will because I follow all the mermaid tail companies because I just like looking at them. They just make me happy. (laughs) I'm like, they're so pretty. And the mer, oh, it's very, it's just fun. It's just a good time. Yes. Even watching them being made is just (laughs) entrancing. 
It's so fun. There's one. I think it's the, I think it's Finn folk. They're two. I think they're <gasps> sisters. And yeah. I like to watch them doing the spray painting. I feel relaxed. Like, I don't. Yeah, it's like those cleaning videos on TikTok. It's just good to watch. I, I'll just sit and watch. Uh, you know, one of my favorite is rug cleaning. <gasps> yes, I love oh those videos. God. The dirtier the it's rug. It's so satisfying. Oh, my God. I can sit there. Like, literally, it will be the most rant. It's always like a Saturday morning. Like, I've woken up <laughs> a little late. Like, I don't have to do my other job. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to chill. I go on to Facebook and I go on to one of these rug cleaning and I just watch five minutes of someone shampooing a rug oh the satisfaction when it comes out so clean and they show you the comparison <gasps> yeah Stop. the hum of the machines is really soothing yeah. there's not harsh music it's not a bunch of flashing lights yeah. just the hum of the machine and yes. clean and i didn't have to clean it <laughs> i didn't have to exactly i didn't have to do it when they like, squeegee yep. the rug <laughs> oh. Yeah. yes oh my god i love it. it just makes you feel so good and you're like oh it's so clean this is so great all right we went off topic and it's totally fine because that's what this is all about yes. <laughs> we go off topic here and we love it we love a rant okay so anyway now we're gonna go to our dish of the week which i had to change real quick because I cannot find the other dish, but it's fine. It goes with what we're about to talk about. So our dish of the week is a poultry se seasoning for protection. Ha, okay. This is super easy, everybody. This is just poultry seasoning, literally, that you can put together with a bunch of protective herbs. And we're going to talk about protective herbs in a couple minutes. So like it, so the seasoning goes two table, two teaspoons of dried sage, one and a half teaspoons of dried thyme, one teaspoon of dried marjoram, um, three-fourths teaspoon of dried rosemary, Shh, be quiet machine, one half teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a half teaspoon of ground black pepper. So this is a nice little seasoning you can make. You can put it on your chicken. It'll taste real good, and it will spiritually protect you while you're eating delicious chicken. Yay, that's nice. Okay. I have one for you. Do it. I'm ready. Oh my gosh. It's uh shawarma seasoning. Mm. So it's got it's very warm. All the herbs in there are protective. Mm -hmm. This is the recipe is given in parts, so you can make as little or as much as you want. I okay. usually fill a a little ball jar and mm -hmm. label it and I put it in my thing, my spice cabinet. Mm. And I, I you, you can do it on just chickpeas. I do it on ground turkey all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, a little like a can of tomatoes. Beautiful. Put it over rice or couscous. It is two parts turmeric, mm -hmm. two parts cumin. I like the ground better because it's got better aromatics, but the seed okay. is fine. Uh, one part dried coriander, one part garlic powder, mm -hmm. one part paprika, mm. half a part of allspice, and half a part of black pepper. Mm. And it is warm and sweet and gorgeous. And I just, I will put that on anything. It sounds delicious. Mm, <laughs> I like it. Okay. All right. Everybody, you'll hear that. And actually, I will write it out and put it in the show notes also so everybody can hear that, can get that recipe if you would like. Mm, that sounds delicious. Okay. It's so good. I know. <laughs> oh. All right. So now you got two recipes for the price of one. This podcast is free, but you still got two recipes for the price of one. Um, so... <laughs> so we're going to go to our tea time. So we're going to learn something today. And today we're going to talk about a subject that's very close to my heart. And uh, something Amy obviously will know a lot about because it has to do with herbs and plants. Now, I'm going to go on my rant really quick. <clears throat> I'm sorry, everybody. I'm getting on my soapbox. Okay. So we all know that people love to clear things with sage. The last thing, though, I want to hear is that you can't find sage or that you're like, I don't know what sage to use. Listen, no, a couple things. Number one, you can use any type of sage. You can use your regular ass sage in your house. Because what do we know here? That everything's about what? Intention. Okay. Then also, the other thing you can do is not use sage. You can use something else. There's so many things to use. And I feel that in the, the problem is in the new age circles, everybody only uses sage and everybody only knows sage. And it's just unnecessary. We can use so many other things. And we're going to talk about them right now. 
And we're going to get Amy's cosign on it so that we all know it's for real. and It's not just me spouting shit. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to talk about it. Oh, the other thing we have to mention real quick, because we all know this now, but I want to make sure. So when we talk about clearing, we talk about clearing. We don't say smudging. That's a closed practice. It has nothing to do with you. If it doesn't have anything to do with you. If you are of a group that does smudge, cool. That's your thing. It's no problem. But the rest of us are just clearing. That's what we're doing, right? Smudging is a specific ceremony done by a specific group of people. And it's no problem, right? All right, cool. Yay, we got that down. Okay, everybody. So you want to clear your house. Also, let's really quick, when you want to clear, it's more about, um, it's like I said before, it's about intention too. You don't just burn stuff and then just be like, it's gone. Like you have to like do some visualization, um, visualization at the least, or just seeing things leave, right, is good. Um, if you want to set up an altar, if that's your thing, if you want to do a little ceremony around it, awesome. A ritual around it, awesome. But at least have that intention in your mind. A lot of things don't work well when you just expect the ingredients to do it. Now, what I mean by that is like you can have the best of the best and you could have ordered something from another country and you have this and you have that and everything's so special and expensive and nice. And you're like, this is definitely going to work because I ordered the best of the best. And we actually talked about this also in a previous episode with our friend of the show, Elohim, who was talking about the same situation. He was like, you can order the best, most expensive stuff, but if you don't truly believe it's going to work, if you don't truly believe in what you're doing, it's just not going to work. Because that's not how magic works. Like, you got to really be like, yeah, this shit's going to work today. This is going to be the best. And this is what you got to visualize what you want to happen happening. And like, it's good. It's good. Um, Doubt is the killer of all magic. There we go. 100%. If you really just don't, you're like, if you're, that's why we say, even like when I started doing tarot, I would always tell people, you can read for yourself if you want. It's it's hard. I think people who are more advanced in it, it's easy, obviously. But at first, you don't want to read out of desperation. Because anytime you're desperate, shit's not going to work. Because your mind isn't right. You're not in the right headspace for a lot of the time. So desperation magic, desperation reading, divination, it usually comes out funky. Because it's just not, you're not right. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to tell you some stuff. And again, Amy... You can co-sign on things. If I'm saying something or you have another thing to add to it, please let me know. Okay. So this is a little article I found and I was like read through it. I was like, generally, I think this is pretty right. Okay. One of my favorite things for clearing or decluttering is cedar. Mm. And you can, it it smells good and you can find it anywhere. It's probably grown in your yard. Cedar grows in the, oh, it grows so much, so many places. It's really great grower. Exactly. It's so easy. Most places, I would think, in the U.S., you can find it. Like, People using the landscaping a lot. Yeah. it's it, Yeah. You probably have a bush somewhere within a one-mile radius of wherever you live. There's a cedar mm-hmm. bush. Unless you live in a city or something. But even then, you probably can find a cedar bush. You can it's find everywhere. it in a planter or in front of a hotel in a heartbeat. Yes. It's everywhere. Those little green leaves. You've seen cedar. You know what it looks like. But you can use that for burning. And it smells good, too. It's great. Cedar wood is really good too. If you are a knitter or you are anybody who uses yarn and stuff, putting cedar wood around your wool will keep away moths from eating through your nice, beautiful wool sweaters. This herb I don't know too well, but you probably do, Amy. Yerba Santa? Oh, yes. Okay. Yerba Santa, it says here that it helps also for clearing, but also helping like heal broken hearts it says so people Mm -hmm. dealing with love situations okay yeah i don't know too much about that one but i your basanta is lovely it looks it looks like the the verbena family when you're when it's dry you'll see curled pale green leaves it's Mm. easy to find smoke sticks of it in especially i get them in baltimore all the time at Mm -hmm. crystal candles and cauldrons great shop people are really lovely but it's the leaves that are used more often that we want to they want to make sure that there's enough to keep growing rather than rather than harvesting the wood like cedar has the magic of clairvoyance and divination, material gain of mm-hmm. especially of uh, specific objects. You're like, oh, I need a new car. Mm-hmm. Go with the cedar. But the yerba santa is sanctifying, not just cleansing. 
-hmm. it's going to leave the space in a positive space rather than a blank slate. Oh, if you're using something like in the sage family, the salvias, I really like salvia lucantha because Mm. it's it's called Mexican bush sage. It comes in really long, thin arrowhead leaves that are Mm -hmm. softer than lamb's ears. Oh wow. It's beautiful to grow. They have two foot long spikes of purple flowers that hummingbirds love. So it's a beautiful landscape plant. So you can grow it, dry your own materials, have them on hand. And it has a spicier fragrance to it than like a white sage, a salvia apiana. But it's got that really beautiful cleansing smoke to it. But that leaves it in a very blank slate. It's a vacuum. So you want to burn something to fill the space with good after you've used sage, we don't just leave a vacuum, but the yeah. Santo will leave that space in a positive light rather than just neutral. Yeah. And that's a really good point, too, that you make. I think everybody's so obsessed with glaring, but like, you do want to bring in something warm, something, depending on what you want, something to fill that space and energy. You're not saying you have to bring in furniture or anything, but something to fill with what you want there we go if you want to fill it with some loving vibes some self-love vibes some whatever kind of love you like vibes that's a good one to bring it in clear and then bring in that good energy yeah cool don't use Um, jasmine though when you burn it it smells like cat pee yeah i don't like that i tried that one time i used to make some incense and like i'd be like i'm gonna put jasmine because jasmine's cute it is cute but it smells bad (laughs) (laughs) it smells like cat pee when you burn it (laughs) Don't exactly the oil smells good but the the plant um so don't worry about that okay yeah diffuse the jasmine absolute that'll work much better yeah it's expensive the real one so expensive yeah so expensive very expensive all right my favorite because you can i grow it in my backyard rosemary is mm-hmm. great oh it's because it's I like rosemary because it's it's very to me like folk magicy. Rosemary grows mm-hmm. everywhere. You can just use it anytime. In a pinch, sometimes I like to burn rosemary more than I like to burn a sage or a copal because I don't always have mm-hmm. sage or copal and I gotta go get copal from somewhere. So rosemary in a pinch, I'm like, oh, my girl, you're doing great. I don't have to wait for a pinch. Like it's great all the time. That's I actually true. use I'll use the rosemary sticks because rosemary is a hardy wood yeah. I'll, I'll make a decoction instead of just boiling hot water i'll actually put the sticks and the leaves and everything in the water and boil it as a syrup yeah. and add it to steamers or lattes and have a rosemary latte yes Ooh. and then i'll dry out the rosemary after it's been used and burn it for cleansing my space Ooh. It's so it's nice because rosemary has this elevation of character Mm-hmm. And that magic is really specific and it's hard to find in other plants. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's not just space, but it's not just uplifting your mood. It's uplifting you as a person, like yeah. increasing the quality of your character. That is really incredible. Yes. Um, it's great for consecration, but it's not just cleansing. It's this uplifting. There's a spiritual bent to it, the purification that it has, but it also mm-hmm. has a really strong grounded protection so protection isn't just one thing we know yeah. there's plants that burn away anything nasty before it can get to you and there's mm-hmm. plants that that uplift the vibes there's no way anything nasty can come in but rosemary itself will ground anything nasty before it can get to you so that way it can't even enter your space because the vibe is so awesome so oh. it's that strength that rosemary has not a lot of plants have it which is why there's a Controversy is too strong of a word. There's a kerfuffle in some circles because Cunningham said, oh, if you have anything wrong and you don't have anything, you you don't have a certain herb, you can just replace it with rosemary. Mm -hmm. And so it feels dismissive of how amazing rosemary is. Mm -hmm. Like when I do my notes for my books, I use recipe cards. I use index cards in a little recipe box. Yeah. And I needed four (laughs) index cards just for rosemary because Mm -hmm. it does so many really incredible things. I think it does it a disservice to just... Use it as a blank insert on it's the free space on a bingo card. <laughs> oh no, not rosemary. But then it makes me feel like <laughs> rosemary's like the crystal quartz of herbs. People are like yes. you don't have what you need, just get a quartz crystal. Like you'll be alright. Like, <laughs> like, oh, don't disrespect quartz crystals like that. <laughs> Do you, you want to know some really neat things that rosemary does? Yes. Gives you confidence. It enables your courage. It balances your entire aura. 
Mm. Um, it's great for defensive magic, not just offensive magic. It's really there to support and uplift you when you're in times of trouble or crisis. Um, mm. It helps elevate your mind if you have um, uh, either racing thoughts or obsessive thoughts, just looping your brain. That rosemary will help eliminate that that recording loop that's going on in your brain because it is it's an antidepressant. It's actually oh. a really lovely antidepressant. It helps with beneficial dreams. If you've got nightmares, if you've been having some issues getting to sleep or staying asleep, burning some mm -hmm. rosemary before bed, like a half an hour. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure all of our materials are extinguished, no fire hazards. Absolutely. It's great for friendship, friendship and magic, um, mm -hmm. hex breaking. It's heart lifting. Like there's, there's nothing rosemary can't do and mm -hmm. it doesn't get enough credit. It doesn't. Growth. And you can grow it in the winter time, even if you'll mm -hmm. so it might sometimes in my little garden area in my backyard, I'll go out there in the winter after I've abandoned it, right? So everything's dead. Except rosemary. Nope. Except still rosemary. Going. Yeah. <laughs> Rosemary's like, I never die. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm in I'm in zone seven A. So mm -hmm. I have to mulch it pretty good to make sure that it'll live through the winter. It, the last one I had got killed in a polar vortex. Mm -hmm. Um so I have to mulch it and keep it in a in a protected area, like up against the house. There's a little there's a little 90 degree angle between the front steps and the house where I can mm -hmm. mulch it in real good. But mm. it's it's a pretty hardy bush. My goodness. Yes, it's pretty hardy. So we got that. Then we have next, we, you just mentioned, I think you just mentioned like sleep. So we have mugwort. Yes, mugwort I like too because mugwort also grows. Now, I'm a little nervous because I'd be cutting some mugwort behind the library. Obviously not more than is there or just a little bit. Um, at a time so it could grow back but some days i'm like is this mugwort because i'm not the best at plant identification it might just be weeds it's fine it seems to work <laughs> <laughs> i don't drink the tea or anything because i'm not sure what it is but i'll burn it <laughs> but sometimes i'm like should i chance it and i'm like nah i don't want to poison myself by <laughs> yes please don't poison yourself <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, i i make a, a meditation balm with it it okay. is, I put it, I grab the, pull out the crock pot and I harvest big arm loads of it because it, I have a whole mugwort bed just along mm. the side of the house. It's all a mugwort. Got it. And so I'll cut a big bunch of it and make this, the salve is a nice hearty base of mugwort and whatever oil is cheapest at that time, usually um, a nice olive oil base. Mm. And I will let the fresh herb simmer in a crock pot for a couple days. I usually mm. do this over the new moon. And it smells like swamp ass <laughs> while bad. it's going yeah. in the crock pot. So the batch that I just made is I used oak moss because it's mm -hmm. really incredible hex breaker mm -hmm. and a little bit of lavender to uplift the variety of the scents and mm -hmm. give it a middle note to tr hang out in because mm -hmm. oak moss is a gorgeous base note. It's the lichen that grows on oak trees. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, but it's got flat leaves or it's a, just a big flat circle you'll see on that the trees outside the very pale green but it smells like leather and violets mm -hmm. um, it's used in vegan perfumes as a leather substitute it's gorgeous yeah oak moss is one of those things that i made some perfumes and i used oak moss in what i made for bridget and it was very it's like very thick um oh yeah it's an the absolutes are very you have to actually i usually give them a little warm water bath yeah to loosen them up for a couple minutes before i try and work with it because it's so thick yeah but it does smell really good like oh, it's yeah. yeah it's really rich like it's very cool those of you listening if you are interested in checking out and working with mug uh, with a uh, oak moss i get it from pipingrock.com you can get a mm -hmm. two ounce absolute it's the actual real thick my goodness you need a spoon to scoop it out of the bottle i mm -hmm. swear absolute for about $30 which for an absolute mm. is dirt cheap yeah okay I will put that link also in the show notes everything's going to the show notes today we also <laughs> loving it so yeah mugwort is great it's pretty it's out there most of the time you can usually find it's like it's identified I think as a weed a lot of the time people think it's yeah. a weed it, yeah and it grows real tall but it's great and you can hang it I, I brought a whole bunch of it home I just hang it up dry it out and I burn it whenever I need to But so it's great I love my work then we got juniper for comfort juniper I like the way juniper smells when you burn it 
but I I don't really find it that much. I had it once, and I think I bought it from somewhere. But then I can't really find juniper. Again, I'm not your plant identification girl. Don't come with me foraging, because you might not. <laughs> <you're back. laughs> we'll go with Juniper. Amy. Is so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'll help us out. <laughs> Juniper is so lovely. My best friend just named uh, her baby daughter Juniper. Oh, I, love, I love this plant. It's fantastic because it's uh, juniper protects from accidents. I'll anoint my new vehicles with juniper. I'll have a little sprig of juniper in a talisman placed oh. in my car when I get a new car. It protects specifically against ghosts. So if you're like, no, not about, no, no ghosts in my house, please. Like we can talk outside. <laughs> juniper will protect from ghosts. <laughs> it's huge in protection. We're protecting mm. from ghosts, harm, protection from anger, protection from evil. Aura cleansing, banishing, it transforms depression. Mm -hmm. Juniper is uplifting. Great for dreams. Fertility magic. Yes, thank you. <laughs> if you are if you work with alcoholic spirits, not the ghost kind, it you can actually cleanse your house with by sprinkling gin around the property mm -hmm. and making sure that those the particular banishing that it offers, because gin is just flavored vodka yeah. when you get down to it. Oh. So you can asperge with gin to cleanse your space, protect it from all the manner of nasty things because mm. it's the magic of happiness and harmony mm. and it averts hexes. It's not just hex breaking. It makes sure that they can't land in the first place. Ooh. Juniper is an amazing plant. Juniper is doing great. Um, okay. Yes. Loving it. Then we get to my favorite girlies and I say girlies cause there are a bunch of them. They could be men. They could be non-binary. I don't know, but I'm just calling them girlies in this situation. A resin. I love gender a neutral, resin. Gender yeah. neutral girlies. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah gender yes, neutral resins girlies. are my jam. Yes, I love a resin. Let me tell you, I am a frankincense and myrrh kind of girl. Anytime, anywhere, ah, anything's happening, I'm like, get me some Jesus incense stat. We're gonna clear this I'm bitch sorry, out. Was... <laughs> Can um, I tell you my frankincense story? Yes, please. <laughs> This is my favorite. So I worked at a shop called Mystical Voyage. It was the largest shop in Baltimore when it closed in November of 2010. Mm -hmm. Huge, like 5,000 square feet. It's giant. Oh, wow. So there was a cafe. There's the gift shop area. There was a holistic health care center. There was a yoga studio. Like it was just mm. giant. In the holistic health care center, there were rooms where, where I read tarot. So I mm -hmm. rented out a room and I read tarot there all the time. I'm there reading a particular night. I didn't have any clients at that moment. So I'm wandering around the gift shop. It was the first week in January. Uh, I'm wandering about. It's dark and cloudy and windy as hell outside. You're waiting for the four horsemen of the apocalypse to come riding by. It was windy. There was lightning, but it wasn't raining. It, there was some atmosphere. I'm in, the, <laughs> I'm in the gift shop and this car comes in screeching up to the front door. You're waiting to see somebody skidding on three tires. He jumps out of the car. He comes running up to the, flings it open. There's wind chimes on the door. I think they're going to go flying too. He comes, his hair's all disheveled because the wind is, is ridiculous outside. Wild, big giant wild eyes. He says, where is your frankincense oil? <laughs> My guy. It's right. Here you go. Frankincense and myrrh. If you like the this one has frankincense, myrrh, and mugwort in it. It's beautiful. They're great. If you, since you like frankincense, I also have it by the pound frankincense and myrrh over here by the pound here's some rolls this is our resin table he's like you have frankincense and myrrh <laughs> yes we have it's right here. it's like take it's fine <laughs> whatever he's like obviously having some sort of emergency that's frankincense based <laughs> so his hair is disheveled his eyes are wild i get him over to pay at the counter and I'm like are you okay can we call someone for you is there a problem <laughs> it turns out that this poor young man is one of the younger ministers, one of the, the students at the local Catholic church. <laughs> they ran out of frankincense and myrrh at the midnight mass for Christmas. Oh, no. And he no. forgot to reorder it from the company. And oh. their their epiphany mass was starting in five minutes. <laughs> and he's like, the witches will know. And so he ran to the witches to get frankincense and myrrh. He was a smart ass minister. He said the witches have yep. no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go. So he came to that. ask the witches that. 
That guy came back for years for our coffee clutch on Sunday mornings after he was done doing his mask thing. He would come in and hang out with us. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Okay, I want to say, if there ever was a frankincense emergency, that is a frankincense baby. <laughs> that is a frankincense emergency. <laughs> Not epiphany without some frankincense and myrrh. That's crazy. <laughs> What kind of mass is that? It's not a real one. Better get that. Not real mass. No, it's fake. Like, it's <laughs> oh, that is so funny. I love that. Resins are great. Don't forget your charcoal, or else you'll ruin any surface you put it on. Somebody's epiphany. If- yeah, exactly. <laughs> you'll need a fire, a fire safe container. But if you use a resin, just make sure you look up, like, that you're using the right stuff. Because I've seen people use, like, little bowls, like, skinny, regular bowls, and, like, almost burn themselves. Because they just put the charcoal in the bowl instead of putting, like, some sand or some salt in it. Like, you got to be careful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be careful, everybody. Don't hurt yourself. Or just get a little cute incense burner. Like, it'll be fine, guys. It's fine. It's the best. I love frankincense and myrrh. Also love some dragon's blood. It's expensive. Yeah, I buy it by the pound. Yeah. It's not cheap, but if you can get a little bit, it's, it's great. And I, like I mentioned before, I love Copal. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with Copal. When I was doing my training, my shamanic training, we used a lot of Copal, and I love the smell of it. Mm-hmm. So Copal's great. But yeah, if you just got Frankenstein. To... Then... Go ahead. You'll be happy to know that it grows on six out of seven continents. So if you're concerned about appropriation, it is absolutely everywhere on the planet, everywhere. Mm. Like if there's some that grows in the United States. So mm. it, you can find it in your on your continent, if not in your biome. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize it grew everywhere like that. That's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh good. I feel better. Okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> good. All right. So it's popular and it's easy. So then we also have on the list and... We also have Palo Santo, which I don't um, use anymore because I know there's been a lot of deforestation in especially Brazil. It's illegal to deforest for Palo Santo. Legally, you can only harvest what's on the ground. Got it. Okay. So it, 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 it's used as insect repellent. Like burning mm-hmm. it is, it's not just, oh my God, it's amazing because it's a plant. We know I'm the plant person. It's used as an insect repellent. You can buy it in a lot of different places just to burn it to keep mosquitoes away. So there's a lot of, yeah, actually, there's been a lot of concern over burning it as a plant. And I don't want to make, I don't want to take away from this plant from the power of this by over harvesting. Mm -hmm. It's illegal to to take it if it's not falling on its own on the ground. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Sure. They had that problem. They actually saw that happening in uh, places like India with sandalwood. And they're like, we're nipping it in the bud. Yeah. It's illegal to um, harvest sandalwood. And so people were poaching it with dynamite, taking it out of the country, processing it into the country, and then selling it illegally. Mm. And so we have places like Australia who are like, hey, why not grow this really fantastic Australian sandalwood? Mm-hmm. Centalbum spicatum has a little spicy note to it. Mm-hmm. The w- Just one farm in Australia that grows sand- this Australian sandalwood is three times the cu- the size of mm-hmm. the country of France. Yeah. France. Like, wow. it's <laughs> just one farm. Australia is really great with their conservation efforts. If you harvest a tree, you have to plant three of them by law. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love that. Okay. Yes. And actually, we were going to talk about sandalwood, too. Sandalwood. Sandalwood's great. I like the way sandalwood smells. Now we know some facts about sandalwood, some Australian sandalwood. Yes. Loving it. So now you can get it from Australia. I, I think I have Australian sandalwood and I really love the way it smells. It smells mm. so nice. Yeah. It's- Tr- think of your traditional white sandalwood with just a hint of spice in the back of your nose, like, mm. like a clove or a cinnamon in the back of your nose. Yes. Okay. This is a random comment, but I have to say, because like you love plants and we had um, Mauricio, a friend of the podcast earlier who does perfume. I love how Mm -hmm. people who love plants and scents talk about them. 
Like, it just makes me happy. Um, like, it's just like listening to the way you speak about it. Like, and you just talk about it in such like, it's almost like a romantic way that people who love plants yes. talk about plants. Oh, it makes me, it just warms my heart. <laughs> Blackthorn's Botanical Magic started as a magical guide to aromatherapy. Mm-hmm. And it's became, it's evolved into a guide to magical perfumery because of my love of perfume. I keep my perfume collection in my bedroom and I have over 500 perfumes. Wow. Yeah, my my desk is set up as a perfumer's organ, so I can reach over and grab any oil that I need. It's right mm. here at my fingertips. Oh, that's cool. I, the Perfumer's Apprentice has some really great materials. I buy pipettes by the trillions because I use them so often. <laughs> Perfume is such an incredible thing. One of the things I mentioned in Botan- Blackthorn's Botanical Magic is a company called Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Mm-hmm. They're a perfumer. They were originally in Hollywood. They're now located in Philadelphia. And probably 450 of the perfumes that I have are theirs. They're a small, they're an indie perfume house that is owned by witches. They mm-hmm. they release a perfume for the full for every full moon. They have a different perfume. They have mm-hmm. perfumes for eclipses. They have perfumes for sabbats. They have perfumes for. They have fully licensed. Not we're not stealing from artists and authors. Mm-hmm. Um, fully licensed Terry Pratchett, Neil Gaiman, really incredible perfumes. There's Coraline perfumes. There's Oh, what is the, what is that movie? Only Lovers Left Alive. They have American Gods perfumes. They have really incredible collections. They have materials that 100% of the proceeds go to different charitable contributions. So you can see this perfume supports this perfume supports this. So say you didn't want to support a dog rescue, you wouldn't Mm -hmm. buy that perfume and then you can give your money to cats. They would never do that, but yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there. Elizabeth Burial is the nose behind Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, and mm. she is incredible. I have probably 12 of her perfumes sitting right here on my desk, and mm. I just happened to grab Gingerbread Oud. Ooh. And it, it is exactly what it says. It is a gingerbread perfume that is really Oud heavy. Mm. Oh my God. Ah. Uh. If you haven't experienced oud, it is a tree that is sacred to indigenous tribes in Australia and New Zealand. It is sacred drums are made from oud. So Mm. the rituals of these specific practices have that warm, earthy, sweet, woody smell because all of their drums are made from oud. Uh, It's just a really incredible material that's available. It's not endangered. It's not threatened. It's there's no... Um, ethical concerns with working with oud itself but it's it's also called agar in mm. in cunningham's books you'll see it uh, referred to as such but she's inspired by poetry and art and music and literature and you can go on their website you can search mm-hmm. for a feeling a sense a color mm-hmm. a word a poem and find all of the perfumes that contain that note so if you want to smell like blood there's probably 12 perfumes you could find on their website that they use a really thick syrupy cherry as their blood note. Mm. And it's incredibly soothing for me. Like it's just really, yeah. there's Kyoto and Kabuki are two of the cherry notes that I really like. Mm. Kabuki is cherries and white musk and Kyoto is cherries and red musk. Okay. So you can, <laughs> please, if you like perfume, go and look at Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Okay. Um, you'll get a five milliliter bottle of perfume for probably around twenty five or thirty dollars, and mm-hmm. I there's a million applications in them. Each bottle, you only need a drop, and you'll wear, it'll wear all day because it's an oil based perfume instead of an alcohol. Yeah, you have a nice reasonable throw, and it's if you find something, you're like, oh, I don't, I can't smell it, so how do I know? There's a huge cult following for the perfume company, and if you don't like it, you can sell it in any number of groups. People trade them, people sell them. There's, you can, you're never stuck with a perfume. If you're like, ah, this isn't really my jam. People will buy it. People will use it. People will love it. And they send free perfume samples with every order. Mm. Another link, everybody. Another link in the show notes. (laughs) (laughs) You better read these show notes, everyone. You better read them. (laughs) She's going to be typing all night. You better read it. 
I have a lot to type up and you better read it. You better enjoy it. You better enjoy yourself, okay? When you can get paid every two weeks. You can spare $25. Try it out. You want to smell like some gingerbread or maybe some blood? You'll like it. I believe Amy. She's trustworthy. She's no problem. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've enjoyed her so far. I, I believe her. So, yeah. So, mm. So those are some of the things that we can use to clear that we talked about. Now we got into perfume, which I'm like, so I'm like listening to you talk once again about perfume. And I'm like, hmm, I could listen to you just talk about this all day. <laughs> like, honestly, it's just so- I've started just reviewing perfumes on my TikTok just because I, I love talking about it so much. So if you're like, hmm. oh, I need some happy brain chemicals. I'm going to listen to Amy talk about perfume. I will. You can. There's like a million videos on, 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 on TikTok of me just talking about perfume. Great. Awesome. Another thing for me to look at on TikTok for hours. I'm excited. Ugh, what I need. I, know, I love it. Oh, okay. Oh, I love it. Literally, as soon as we're done, I'm going to follow you on TikTok. Like, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. So we have come to our story time. Like I said, we're going to tell a classic story today because sometimes we don't be telling classic stories. And I think we all just need a little refresher. Today, we're going to talk about Jack and the Beanstalk because we're talking about plants. And I was like, let's talk about Jack. You all remember Jack, right? Okay. So this story goes like this. Jack comes from a pretty poor family, right? He doesn't. His family doesn't have a lot of money. They have a farm. And farming is hard, especially when you're farming and you have no money and you don't have a lot of animals. It's rough out here. So Jack's mom was like, Jack, we have a cow. And I need you to go to the market and sell the cow because we don't have any money. And Jack was like, okay, no problem. So he goes to the market. And now I'm taking a little license with this story. I'm going to add a little spice to it. So he sees a shady character. Okay. (laughs) Jack is like, ah, hello, sir. And he's trying to be polite to this guy. And the guy is like, hey, what's up? And the guy is like, hey, that's a nice looking cow. And he's like, yeah, I got to sell this cow because me and my mom, we need to get some food. And the guy's like, I know what you could do better than selling the cow for food. You could just sell the cow to me and I'll give you three beans. And Jack was like, that sounds ridiculous. And the guy's like, but these are magic beans. And Jack was like, again, that sounds ridiculous. The guy was like, come on, if you buy these beans, like you'll never regret it. And Jack really thinks to himself, how pissed is my mom about to be? And he knows she's going to be mad. But then he's like, but what if these beans are really magic? Because like we talked about before, Jack has a big imagination and he likes what he likes and he likes magic. So he's like, this could be the greatest adventure I've ever taken. So he takes the beans. Now he goes home. And his mom is pissed. She's like, what happened? And he's like, I went to the, <laughs> I went to the market. Did what? She said, part, wait. She's like, where's the milk and bread? He's like, I got something better, mom. Three lima beans. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> he proceeds to tell his mother they're magic beans. Don't worry, you're going to see. His mom goes to bed. She's in tears because she's like, we're going to starve to death, Jack. My son has put his mark on my death. Like, she is upset, okay? So she's gone to bed. Jack is like, it's fine. So he goes outside and he's upset, but he's like, it's going to be fine. He's like, let me just bury these beans in the garden. I don't even want to think about them no more. I'm so upset now. My mom's upset. Maybe I made a mistake. I'm just going to put these beans out here nothing's gonna happen because i'm an idiot i'm gonna go to bed okay next morning jack wakes up there's a big ass beanstalk (laughs) he doesn't know how this happened overnight this beanstalk is huge he's like oh my god it looks like a tree he can't believe this thing is so big it's so tall it goes into the clouds and he's like oh shit that's crazy so what does he do You'd probably climb it, right? I wouldn't because I get out of breath quick. But like, I probably wouldn't climb because of my delicate lungs. But Jack, he's a hardy boy and he works on a farm. He's fit. So he's like, I'm going to climb this beanstalk. No problem. So he climbs, climbs. He gets up there. There's a castle in the sky. The fuck? I don't know. But there's a castle in the f- sky. Don't worry about it. He gets into the castle and he sees a giantess a giant lady and 
in the kitchen and he's like excuse me i'm so hungry and the giantess is like okay why is there a small boy in my kitchen i don't know but you're hungry no problem the giantess she's a nice person so she gives him some bread and some milk and he sits at this giant ass table he probably can't even reach up there he's so damn small compared to the giantess but he starts eating and he's thanking her for the food then all of a sudden they hear that's the door's opening and now the giant man is coming and this is the giantess's husband oh no he's a jerk so he starts saying fee fi fo fum i smell the blood of an englishman jack's english by the way um, he be alive or he be dead i'll grind his bones to make my bread now if someone says this about you you are going to do what run away because you don't want your bones ground up so jack looks like oh shit so he gets down from the table he books it right he books it to a corner where they can't jack's small compared to these people so they they can't see him and the giant guy is saying to his giant wife where's the english dude and she's like i don't know what english dude you're talking about i never heard of an english dude it's just me and you up in this castle in the sky i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) so so he's like fine i'm gonna eat my dinner i'm gonna take a nap because i had a rough day out at the office and she's like fine so he goes he eats his dinner and then um by the way, everybody, I'm so sorry. My neighbor's dog will not stop barking. So if you hear that in the background, I apologize. Anyway, he goes, eats his dinner, and he goes to sleep. Now, while Jack was hiding, he saw this big sack of gold coins. He's looking at the sack. He's like, I think I could carry this sack on my back. So he realizes he waits for the giant and his wife to go to bed. He gets the sack on his back, and he walks out the door of the castle goes down the beanstalk and goes home. Now, of course, he gets into the door and his mom is like, actually, Jack, where have you been? You've been gone for hours. And Jack's like, does it matter? I've got a bag of gold. And his mom's like, I guess not. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God you're here and you have all this gold because I thought we were going to die today. They have gold. Things go well. His mom's like, great, we can buy groceries now because we're impoverished and this sucks. So now we can buy groceries and we're okay. So they live a little better and things are going well for Jack and his mom. Now, Jack, the beanstalks didn't go anywhere. The beanstalks still there. So after a couple months, Jack is like, that gold, it's good, but I feel like there's more stuff up there. I'm going to climb back up that beanstalk to see what's going up, going on. So he climbs back up and of course he meets once again, Mrs. Giant. And he says, oh, Mrs. Giant, how you doing? I'm so hungry once again. And Mrs. Giant was like, oh, it's you again, small English man? Okay, here we go. I don't know why you keep coming to my house unannounced, but fine. <laughs> like, like, I want to be a good host. Don't ring doorbell, nothing. And nothing. Jack just walks in. <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> she's like, okay, here you are. She's a no good home training. host, though. Yeah, she's always a good host. She always offers food and drink. So she gets him, this time she gets him a Coca-Cola and a fruit roll up let's just say that to spice up the story so he's eating his fruit roll up and a coca-cola and all of a sudden once again we hear and that is the door here comes mr giant jack leaps off the table he goes back to a corner like he did before actually this time he runs to the corner he says they're gonna find me here let me go under the bed so he runs under the bed and here we hear mr giant go fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. And the wife is like, here you go again screaming about Englishmen. First of all, why are you racist against English people? What's the problem? I don't know why you're being a rude person like that. And number two, there's nobody in here except me and you. We live in the sky. And he's like, oh, fine, whatever. I'm eat my dinner and I'm going to sleep. I'm having a rough day. She's like, once again, you're in a bad mood. That's fine eats his dinner they go to bed and then jack's just laying there waiting for them to fall asleep and under the bed he's like why is there a hen under here (laughs) so he sees there's a hen and he's like that's cool he lifts up the hen and she's got a bunch of gold eggs under her and he's like damn everything out here made of gold that's crazy so he's like i'm gonna take this hen i can carry this hen on my back jack takes the hen he climbs back down the beanstalk The next day, once again, his mom's like, I was once again worried about you. Where did you go? He's like, 
Don't worry about it. Once again, though, I have some gold. And this time it's multiplying because it's a hen. And she's like, oh, this is great. So now they have an income, which is this hen. This is great. For some time, they're living great. Everything's well, going well. So now, once again, Jack is like, I feel like there's more up there in the giant's castle I could have. Third time now. He's really trying his luck again. So once again, Jack goes back up the beanstalk. Once again, he runs up in this lady's house unannounced. And once again, she's a good host. And she gives him this time, let's say, she just baked, like, roasted some chicken. She made some rosemary butter potatoes. So she gave them to him this time. Because we love rosemary, as you guys heard before. So Jack's eating his meal. He's mm, She can cook. Let's say this lady can cook. So he's really enjoying it. Some gravy on it. It's nice. Then all of a sudden, here we go. Now, here comes Mr. Giant. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bright grind. Ugh, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. And once again, his wife is like, "There's nobody in here, and I'm actually getting really tired of this. You really need to stop with your foolishness." And the guy was like, "Oh, fine." Once again, you're gaslighting me, but it's fine. <laughs> I'll just believe it. So <laughs> I'm not the only one who's like, "I'm not sure." <laughs> he knows she's lying, but he doesn't want to fight. So. <laughs> so the giant's like, fine, once again, I'm going to eat and go to bed. So now the giant is sleeping. And this time, wherever Jack hid, he found a harp. And the harp was playing beautiful music, just playing go on its own. And Jack was like, this is so cool. I bet that, like, I could make a lot of money with this harp. Or, like, I could just entertain my mom. She really loved this beautiful music. So... Jack's like, I'm going to take this harp. So he takes the harp on his back. Here he goes. And all of a sudden, the harp, which is yelled out, help me, master. A boy is stealing me. And the giant woke up and he's like, what? <laughs> so then he looked. Snitch. I know. <laughs> Snitches get stitches, harp. You should have known that because now we got a problem. <laughs> That's right. Somebody will tell that harp. <laughs> Nobody likes a tattle thing. So the giant then woke up. And saw Jack holding the harp. And he's like, there's this damn Englishman I've been looking for. That's him. So Jack's like, oh, shit. And he starts to run. He runs to the beanstalk. The giant has grabbed an axe at this point. He's t- Jack is terrified. Oh, my God. So he's running. Jack is fast, though. And he gets all the way to the bottom of the beanstalk to his house. And... He gets an axe himself. He goes into the house, gets an, he lives on a farm. He's got an axe, don't worry. Gets an axe. He starts chopping at the beanstalk, chopping at the beanstalk. And he chops so hard. Cause like I said, Jack is in, he's in shape. He does it so hard that the beanstalk falls down and the giant falls off it and the giant dies. Now, the only part of this story that I feel bad for is the giant's wife. Is she by herself up there now? That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but her husband was an asshole, so maybe she's happy. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's always talking about... She's like, I don't have to pull up with the foolishness. I don't have to pick up after him. I don't have to wash his dishes and his dirty underwear. No, thank she's, you. Yeah, she's probably, like, just hanging out with her friends now, like, all day. And she's just, like, she joined a book club. And, like, she got to do all the things she wanted that her husband, like, that's stupid. But she's like, no, I, I love doing this shit. So... She makes in her spare time. Have a glass of wine and talk to her book club. Yes. In her spare time, she does those like 5,000 piece puzzles that her husband wouldn't let her lay out in the living room because he's like, this takes up too much space. She's having the time of her life. So actually, it's fine. She's fine. The But Mr. Giant fell and died. So Jack now had the harp. He had the golden eggs and he still had some gold lit, laid around. And sorry. Jack and his mom, they were now very rich and they lived great. And they lived happily ever after. Yay. For a classic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Body disposal services. <laughs> so that was my always my question about this story. Was where did the giant land? Because he's a giant. And the yeah. beanstalk must have caused tons of destruction in this town. Like <laughs> it got landed mm-hmm. on. But 
I don't know. Yeah. They don't tell you. Even they if they have, because they have a farm and they're a little ways outside of town, like, he probably landed on some crops that they could have yeah. eaten, they could have sold for some money. <laughs> exactly. Like, maybe it was, maybe Jack did it in a way that, like, loggers do, like how they strategically cut on one side of the tree so they know how it's going to land. Maybe so that's what that he way. did. Yeah, yeah, maybe he determined that. Okay, mm-hmm. Jack, I hope you didn't destroy anybody's property or your own. Anyway, I love how that's what I'm thinking about. Even little monster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hope everything worked out for you, Jack. Okay. That's our story, everybody. And at the end of the story, that means that our show has now come to the end. Amy, we have loved having you on. I say we as everybody listening because I feel like they also loved it. Can you tell us where we can find you on the internet if people want to follow your lovely TikTok or go to Blackthorns Botanicals to see what you're making? Yes. So if you want to check out Blackthorns Botanicals, it's Blackthorns, plural, botanicals.com. You can check out the first 30 pages of all five of my current books at amyblackthorn.com. You can download the first 30 pages for free. I want you to know that's the voice that you want in your head. Like, <laughs> you want to learn about magical self-defense, physical self-defense. You want to make sure that you feel safe and comfortable walking home at night. Like, Blackthorn's Protection Magic is yours. Go look at the first 30 pages and see if that's what you want. If you want to follow me on TikTok, I am amy underscore blackthorn underscore author. If you're on Instagram, it's all smooched into one word, Amy Blackthorn author. I am super excited to see all of your faces in at the end of August because I have two books coming out, one on August 20th and one on September 1st. Okay. August 20th is Social Media Spells, 366 Ways to Get Witchy on the Web. Mm. So it's a year, 66 individual spells for all sorts of really creative ideals that are appropriate for social media magic. Mm-hmm. We talk about everything from protection to cleansing, hunting for a new job, what's appropriate in the workplace. There's a wide range of topics. Mm-hmm. And it's great, especially if you have a business, because it gives you content ideas for making sure that your platform stays relevant. Yeah. Then on September 1st, Sacred Plant Magic comes out from Wiser. And mm-hmm. I'm super excited because that's the sequel to Blackthorn's Botanical Magic. Okay. So it's developing a deeper relationship with plants as entitled and empowered beings with agency. I want to develop relationships with peppermint or jasmine or any of these other really amazing and incredible plants. And um, it gives you the agency and understanding of how to approach these beings as empowered beings who can carry on a conversation with you and, and see what you guys have to learn together. Um, it's really incredible to talk about different ways to look at these plants and Mm -hmm. develop relationships with them Mm -hmm. and so i'm very excited to see how people are are going to react to that yes and of course like i said throughout the whole show there will be links Okay, in the show notes. <laughs> like, like, you can find all of Amy's previous books, and I'm going to put links to the books coming out. If there are links for like pre order and stuff like that, I'll put all those things in the show notes so you can go and check those out so you can make sure you get it as soon as it comes out because it sounds like it's going to be pretty good, both of those books, especially social media. Where I'm so super interested in that. It sounds awesome. Very different. So I'm going to put everything, all of Amy's information will be right there so you can look everything up, including all the other fun stuff that we talked about during this episode because this was a good ass time. And if you if you don't know what you're listening to, this is Dying with the Divine. So you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok sometimes when I update it because I'm terrible lately because... Yeah, it's a lot going on, but don't worry about it. If you enjoy the show, please pause and give us a great five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever platform that you like. You can even go on the Dime with the Divine website and give us a uh, rating there if you like. We have merch. You can check that out. If you have any suggestions for episodes or questions or comments or constructive critiques or anything at all, feel free to email me at dimewithdivinepod at gmail.com. And if you want to follow me, Ashley, I'm at Sankofa HS. That's S-A-N-K-O-F-A-H-S and Sankofa Healing Sanctuary on Facebook. At Sankofa um, HS is all by other platforms on there. 
So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for another week. We'll see all of you next week for another great show. And until then, goodbye.